exact flat for SOLIDWORKS. In this example, we have an inflatable boat, a Zodiac type boat in this example, which was modeled from scratch using SOLIDWORKS 3D uh, drawing tools that we are going to flatten in exact flat. And we've done a little bit of pre-processing work here. As you can see, we've already got our flat, our initial flat pattern, which for the developable surfaces should be fine. But we're going to go ahead through the process and optimize this. We've got about 15 pieces here. And as we click on a remesher, we're going to get varying stages of completion uh, for the meshing process. For those who are not familiar with the meshing process, the uh, program creates an analysis mesh, which is optimized for our exact flat 3D to 2D flattening algorithms. The meshing process is designed to reduce solve time and increase pattern accuracy. And you can see here that we're going to go through these individually. So as the individual pattern pieces are completed in terms of remeshing, we are then starting the optimizer on each individual one. And we've got a couple of complicated pieces. You can see there's one that uh, is still remeshing at uh, a 1% level. But for those that are 100% complete, we'll just go ahead and start the optimization. And you have a choice of letting the remeshing process run to completion for all the pieces and then optimizing the pattern, uh, the pattern geometry of the flattened pieces all at the same time. Or as we're doing here, you can do it as, it, um, uh, as the pieces uh, become uh, available from the remeshing algorithm. It depends on the complexity. So you can see here, this piece is a little bit more complex. It's got some strain and sag. But as we start the optimizer, it quickly eliminates those and, uh, and, and gives us a, a, a pattern piece, which is pretty close to the approximate pattern piece that we're going to have at the finish. And I think this one's going to work for a little bit longer because I do see some strain and sag that is residual in there. But the, um, <clears throat> the process is pretty straightforward. Our algorithms are searching for strain and searching for sag. Where it finds sag, it's going to pinch it away. And where it finds strain, it's going to relax it. It does it by iterative optimization. So when a candidate for a flat pattern is presented, it runs the analysis uh, uh, algorithms on those on those patterns. And when it runs through, it will alter the uh, map of strain and sag. As you can see, it's doing for this piece right here, where there's some sag around the perimeter edges and strain in the middle. And then it'll try and eliminate it. And then it will take a new candidate, which will that which was the results for the subsequent one and run through the process again. Here what we're going to use for these ones, these are a little bit more complicated geometry. You can see in the left there's quite a bit of sag and quite a bit of strain, which is to be expected on parts like this. We're going to run a PELT algorithm, which is a pre-processing algorithm. The standard algorithm that runs as, as a fracture algorithm, we call it fracture, just takes the polygonal mesh, breaks it apart, lays it flat, sews it up uh, where there's gaps. The PELT algorithm literally slices it open and kind of unrolls it. And it's a pre-processing algorithm that gives a different starting point or a different initial candidate for a flat pattern. And you can see it kind of showed not responding there because it was doing some pretty intensive calculations. Um, but uh, once the PELT algorithm is completed, its process, we just run our standard optimizer. And you can see it's making pretty quick work of the, uh, of, of the SAG portions of this at least. And this one will need to run for a little bit longer in, or, in order to get a, an optimized piece. We're about... Um, 23, 24 percent at this point, and uh, it should take a couple of minutes or so to get uh, to get to the final piece that's you know as 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 strain free as that geometry can get, without making some relief cuts or or, or darts or something like that. So the easy pieces have already been solved, and the more difficult pieces now are in the process of being solved. This will go much faster if you have a fast computer. This computer we're doing the uh, video demonstration on is not particularly fast. It's a four core. Xeon processor. If you've got eight or twelve core machines, uh, this is a our, our algorithms do support multi-threading, so these things can be done. Or the, the bulk of the calculations can be done simultaneously. And as we cycle through these pieces, you can see that we're about four minutes, just over four minutes in. We've got the bulk of the pieces done, about halfway done in the other pieces, and. Uh, um, we'll just check in on some of these other ones here, see how they're doing. It's getting pretty close. I can see some perimeter edges that need to be sorted out with some sag and some strain. We'll check in on some of the other pieces here. 
So this particular one, you might actually have to add some relief cuts to to uh, get a, 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 an optimal shape, or it might require some stretch. So for an, an inflatable, it may be designed to be under under some tension, and therefore that's really not a problem. The kind of strain that we saw there, this piece is actually coming along quite nicely, about 91%. And I think for the purposes of this, we may cut the, uh, the, the solving process a little bit short. Just gives you a flavor. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and stop it here. It gives you a flavor for how the uh, um, uh, more complicated geometry can be solved in conjunction with a very simple geometry. Now, I will point out that all these pattern perimeter edges that are mated to other edges or, or adjacent pieces, those edges, uh, the, the, the seam length has to be maintained. So there are some constraints in running this. But this gives you a flavor for how you take a, a product like this. And this might apply to evacuation slides, uh, lifting devices, any sort of inflatable product out there. It's Exact Plat for SolidWorks. If you want to know more, give us a call or visit our website.